Bismillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. And my bad. Today we'll be covering the topic of raja, al raja and khawf, and the manzila, the place that these two that these two types of ibadah hold in the life of a Muslim. I know a lot of people when they heard the topic, don't be a prisoner to hopelessness. One of the reasons that people become a prisoner to anything in life is that they, I don't want to use the word ignorant, they're unaware of the traps that put them into this cell of hopelessness. Now some people do 10 years in the prison of hopelessness. Some people do six months. Some people might do 10 years and some people might do their whole life or spend their whole life behind the walls of hopelessness. And they don't know that the guard that is keeping them in that prison also has the key. Meaning that a lot of people are held in a prison of hopelessness because there is a person in this world that looks down on them, betrayed them backstabbed them, humiliated them. And now they themselves believe the very thing that their adversary, their detractor, their enemy says about them. So that keeps a person in a prison where they don't feel that they're deserving of living a good life. And the reason I say the, the person, the guard that's keeping you in the cell has the key also, the key is you have to take it from them. Meaning you have to have high thoughts of yourself. You have to know the ma'na, the true definition of a believer. You have to know who Allah is. And you have to know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the believer. You have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is arham, arham rahimin, the most merciful. Allah is ghafur rahim, he pardons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is latif. He'll take a person that fell at the bottom and pick him up. As Allah mentioned in the Quran when he spoke about the Prophet Yusuf, that he was latif lil ibadihi, that he was gentle to his slave. And the scholars they say from the lutf, the gentleness of Allah, is that he takes someone that's at the bottom and brings them back up to the top. So the way you take your key, the key from the person entrapping you is that you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let you rebound in life. And there's many other reasons that people are entrapped in these prisons of hopelessness. Sometimes it can be, for an example, a sister. She came into the deen of Allah. She became mutahajiba and mutanaqiba. She started wearing her hijab. She started wearing the niqab. She started making tadayyan. She, make, she started making irtidab al libas al shari'i. She started wearing the, the libas, the Islamic dress. She started coming to the masjid. She left off clubbing. She left off boyfriends and then she marries a man that domestically abuses her, that is irresponsible, that is verbally abusive, and her self-esteem goes to the ground. I remember counseling a marriage and the sister said on the phone, because she wouldn't tell me in front of the brother because she knows that you know I'm not going to be able to uh, handle something like that in person. So she tells me on the phone, my husband threw me down the steps. And I said, he just didn't throw you down the steps, he threw you and your self-esteem. He threw you and your self-belief. Because when somebody is physically and verbally abusive, you just don't physically harm the body. You also harm the spirit. You also harm the belief system. So now the sister that been domestically, verbally abused, she doesn't think much of herself. So now she goes down a, 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 a downward spiral of marrying the same type of men because she wasn't taught, she didn't have tarbiyah how to choose a man and how to be patient until she finds the quality man that she's looking for. Then you have a brother. He came into the deen. He put his kufi on. He left the streets. Or he could have been in college because everybody that comes into the religion, contrary to what uh, 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 the, social, uh, 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 the newspapers and social media try to portray, contrary to that, we have many people who are in the ranks that are graduates of college, have master's degrees, PhDs, have trades, electricians, plumbers, web developers, scientists, chemists, 
engineers, we have many professionals within our ranks. So you have someone that left the streets. You have someone that is a professional. You have someone that uh, 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 lived overseas maybe 20 years. He studied knowledge. He's a talib al -in. But all, well, we're going to speak about that later, but we're speaking about those who came into the deen and they came into the deen with all of them. Then they got around the religion. Their family turned their back on them. They don't have support. Then they come into the ranks and they start noticing discord. Some brothers are backbiting. Some brothers are gossiping. Some brothers are humiliating their other brother. Then they might themselves be afflicted with someone who tries to bring them down. And then they become a prisoner to hopelessness because they feel that, oh man, what's going on? I, I thought that the dean was going to be like this. Or the person could have fell into ma'asi. As one of the salaf or one of the poets, he said, Kullu insan ibn al -bi Every individual, every person is the, son, is the son of his environment. Every individual is the son of his environment. And this is one of the reasons that hijra was legislated to put, I mean, to place in the, 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 the minds of the Muslims the importance of environment. Sheikh Abdul Razak al Badr, he said, in his book, Fiqh al-Asma' al-Husna, understanding the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that from the lutf, the gentleness of Allah upon children, is that they grow up in a bi'at al-saliha, that they grow up in a righteous environment with righteous relatives and righteous parents. Now let's look at our situation. Dad could have been in prison. Mom could have been on drugs. Relatives could have had pretty... Uh, cousins or nieces or uh, sisters, they messing with all of the dope boys. Big brother running the block, going through shootouts. What, 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 what bia is that? That's a bia to say yeah. That is an evil environment. So you have individuals that because of the environment, they already are not raised upon anything. So then they come into the religion hoping to find peace and then they find the very same thing. But we're not going to ever be imbalanced because within our masajid, within our communities, there's a lot of righteous people and there's a lot of good people and there's a lot of upright people. But we're trying to touch on the topic of why some people fall into hopelessness. So we have to give this point. It's justice. It's right. We do have elements that can distract and that can cause a believer to feel sad and to feel that you know what's going on for lack of better words so the scholars I remember being in the village with the alama Sheikh Waslan Hafidahullah Ta'ala and we done this book Usul al-Iman Sharh Usul al-Iman by Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab with the explanation of Sheikh Sali Fouzan and the ta'liqat, the footnotes and commentary of our Shaykh, Shaykh Raslan Hafidahullah Ta'ala. And what was so unique about these chapters of Raja and Khawf, Khawf and Raja, is that Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, he brought two a hadith. And the first one is An Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu, and the hadith is marfu' is graded marfu' in the imra'atin. Bagian, a bagian, raat kelbin fi yom haron, yotif bibir, kad edla lisanahu minal atish, fanazaat lahu mukaha, for rufira lahabi. It is reported that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily, there was a woman who was a bagi, and we're going to explain what is a bagian in a few minutes. So this woman who was bagi, she saw a dog on a hot day circling a well and his tongue was hanging out of his mouth due to atish, dehydration, being thirsty. So she took off her shoe and gave the kelb, the dog, something to drink and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave her. Now let's look at this point. Shaykh Salih Fouzan, he said, then he brought an ayah in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, says in Surah Nur, ayah 33, 
wa la tuqrihu fatayatikum ala al-bigha Allah says in surah An-Nur and force not your maids to prostitution so the woman who who gave the dog something to drink was a prostitute and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave her because of a righteous deed and having mercy on a dog so my Sheikh Sheikh Raslan Hafizahullah he said what more so a human being you see a human being in a low state you see a human being he scraped his knees his elbows his fingers his head he took a fall he's slumped up and the rahmah you show him is by extending your arm and, 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 and instilling in him the aqeedah the ma'rifa of Allah the knowledge of who Allah is. Allah is a tawab akhi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Tubu ila Allah. He told but in nasuha. Asa rabbukum an yukafir ankum sayyi atikum. O you who believe. What did the Salaf say when we hear? O you who believe. Far asamik. Open your ears. Pay attention. O you who believe. Repent to Allah with clear repentance. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you for your sins and enter you into Jannah. Sheikh bin Baz, when he explained the ayah in Surah Taqaf, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةِ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدِ هَذَا مَا تُوْعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيذٍ And Jannah has been brought close to the righteous. And it is not far. This is what has been promised for every awabin hafid, every man that protects and preserves his religion, his covenant, and his awab. And is one that when he makes a mistake, Sheikh bin Baz, he said the awab is the one that when he makes a mistake, he's raja'ah, he returns back. So just like the woman who was bagiyya, a prostitute, was given hope and mercy because of doing a good deed, we show mercy to the creation by putting hope within them when they slip. And we know that it's between two stations. Fear and hope. As Ibn al-Qayyim said, the slave travels to Allah with two wings. The wing of fear and the wing of hope. Either one. Wing of hope, wing of fear. And the head is of muhabba. So when the, 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 when the slave is traveling to Allah, he can't have a broken wing. He must have hope. Because Ibn al-Qayyim said if he loses hope, he falls out the sky and he's subjected to every beast. And that's why you'll find, for an example, people making piss poor decisions in life because they lost hope. So this is a clear indication, a clear proof from hadith, from sunnah, that we are supposed to have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter our condition. What is this hopelessness? Then, right after that, the shaykh, he brought another hadith Showing that we must have fear. Qala Dakhalat al-nar imra'atun fi hirratin Habasatha La hiya at'amtaha Wa la hiya arsalatha Ta'qul min al-khashash al-ard Another woman entered into the hell Because of a hirra, because of a cat. She entrapped the cat. She, she caged it up. And she didn't feed it. Nor did she let it go about on the earth and eat on its own. Because as you know, cats, they'll go in bags. They'll go in, you know, they'll be waiting outside a restaurant. They're going to find food. I'm not sure all our cats are very witty. But the shaykh, he brings a point. That a person should not, yet tekken, should not rely on their iman and think that because they have iman, they can't enter into the hell. Because this woman was a mukmina. As Shaykh Salih Fawzan, he said, this wasn't a kafirah that entered into hell. She was a mukmina, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give her some time in hell because of oppression. She oppressed an animal. So my Shaykh, Shaykh Raslan Hafidahullah, he said, what more so oppressing a human being? وَمَا خَلَقْتُ jinna wal insa illa liya'budun. The whole dunya was created. As Shaykh Salih Fawzan said in another lecture, the whole dunya was created. The animals that we take the fur off their backs to make coats. All of that Sheikh Salih Fawzan said was made for human beings so that they can have 
ease in worshiping Allah. The whole dunya was created so we can worship Allah. So you're going to oppress the one that the whole dunya was created for? Everything in this dunya. That shows the level that Allah places a human being on. And if you ever remember back in the day, they used to have these televised uh, 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 parts on TV if somebody was stranded. One man, he, let a, he lit a fire. Airplanes come to get him out of that condition. One man, airplanes and forces and army and navy all running in there to get the man out. That's the level Allah places of concern on a, on a human being. That it can be one man trapped somewhere and a whole army is sent to go get him because his life is valuable. So what, what more so a person of Iman and Taqwa? What more so a man that fasts? That makes dhikr in the market on the Eid? What more so a person that, play, that prays Fajr, Zuhr, Asr, Maghrib and Isha? Goes to Yom Jumu'ah? What more so a person that makes nikah, gets married on the, on the sunnah? What more so a person that saves up his money to go make hajj? That person deserves mercy. That person never should feel in prison. That person should never. Now, yes, let, let's, we always got to be balanced. When we make the new, we should feel sadness, regret. And that's why from the conditions of Tawbah, one of them is nedim. Is to regret. As one of the salaf, they said, what is Tawbah? Nedim. He said, Nedim, regret is to Toba within itself, is the totality of Toba. Now, so we find within the statements of Ahl al Ilm the importance of having Raja and Khawf, fear and hope. So somebody might say, I, I, I just feel like I'm in a bad spot. I feel like I've done too much. I, 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 when I came back from Egypt, I, I was noticing the tattoos. Everybody had tattoos from the younger guys that, you know, me and their fathers might have grew up. Or me and their brothers might have been close. So the younger guys got tattoos in too deep. Brother, you're only 18. You're not in too deep or nothing. You just came out the womb. In too deep. You know, they were saying, oh, hey, I'm in the trap. Yeah, you definitely are. You're definitely trapped. Sheikh Abdurrahman and Sa'adi. Depending on how you want to say his name, Sa'idi or Sa'idi. Sheikh Abdul Razak al Badr said it's Sa'idi, but I'm saying Sa'idi because that's what people are used to hearing. He has a book called Sayyid Ilallah wa Dar al Akhirah, Traveling to Allah and the, la uh, and the Abode, the Eternal Abode, the Akhirah. And the first bait, the first line of poetry, he says, Sa'id al Ladina tajannabu subal rada. Happy is the individual that turns away from the low base matters, the low base paths. And after leaving off the low things, he directs himself to the manazim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, the stations that Allah is pleased with. What is a station? Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Sa'idi also wrote an explanation to the book. And you'll find that this is one of the, uh, the habits of the ulama is that they might write a book that's a metin. Then some of the students might say, Shaykh, some of the words are difficult and some of the context we don't understand. So they'll come back and write an explanation to the book. As Ibn Hajar, when we were studying with Shaykh Raslan, he taught us a, a book on hadith. And it was a tremendous book called Nukhbat al Fiqr. So someone wrote to Ibn Hajar and he said, the book is a little difficult. Why don't you explain it so you can uh, uh, release some of the kunuds, some of the treasures of this great work of hadith. So he wrote another book called Nushat al-Nadhar ala Nukhbat al-Fikr, which is the book we studied with Shaykh Huslan Hafidahullah. So Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'adi, he explained a manzila to be a station. Like he said, when you're traveling, you go from one place to another. So... The first menzila in traveling to Allah is yaqadha, is to wake up. And that's why we find the story of Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, when he met the man, and they were discussing some matters. And the man was one who was engaged and indulged in sin for many years. They said he was around 60 years old, the actual age, wallahu a'lam. 
but we know he was older. So when Sheikh Hassan al Bani Hassan al Banna was admonishing the man, when Hassan al Basri was advising the man, he said, "The man said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. From Allah we come, into Allah we return." So the alama, Sheikh Hassan al Basri. He said, Do you know the meaning of what you're saying? The man said, no, explain to me. He said, from Allah we come and to Allah we return, meaning you have to prepare an answer. So, so the man said, what's the, what's the, you know, what's the recourse? How, how do I fix myself then? He said, fix your life now. Fix what you have, your, your present, and Allah will forgive you what you've done in, your, in the past. This is what we call yaqaba. It took the man 60 years to wake up to his condition and 60 years of engaging in wrongdoing one mo'idha one piece of advice was the reason for him to make toba and turn to Allah Fudail ibn Iyad who was a highway robber heard an ayah admonishing him about the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he left off crying and we have numerous Books worth of stories and events that took place in the life of our Salaf that when they were going through calamities, calamities that they that are self-inflicted or calamities from outside forces, they were given advice to return to Allah. They returned to Allah and they fixed their affair. Now you must understand when you wake up. And you want to come out of that prison of sin, of hopelessness, of regret, of guilt. Because some people's prison is guilt. They feel like in my past I had opportunities and I didn't take advantage of them. Sadness afflicts them. Because as Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'idi said in another book, dealing with uh, uh, happiness, he explains what sadness comes from. And he said it comes from that which a person Neglected or missed in the past and anxiety comes from that which a person anticipates in the future And he said that you kill two birds with one stone by taking Advantage of the day you're in you rebound and You make up for what you missed in the past and you're preparing yourself by taking care of your days for what you want in the future But then you have enemies that's going to come when you get out the prison and you there too you have the enemy from the shaitan of jinn and the enemy from the shayateen of men. Because there's, some, there's somebody that's jealous of you right now. That you beat the odds. That you were in a low place and you got back up. You're getting your hair cut. You're wearing your white robe again or your gray one. You're wearing clean clothes again. You're wearing rude. You're putting good fragrances on. You're wearing nice pair of Clarks. Sister, you, you went through a, 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 a divorce. You went through so many calamities. And, and you, you put your jilbab back on. You put your abaya on. You went to the bookstore and just grabbed you 10 new, two, you know, 10, 10, 10 new publications. You're reading again. You're on Mixler, Spreaker. You're downloading lectures. You're attending the durus and the masajid. You're showing that that didn't beat me. That didn't defeat me. My Lord loves to, to, to forgive. And when we look at the hadith, we find so many narrations of encouragement. And that's why you'll find some of the scholars, they wrote books called Targhib or Tarheeb. Warning the people by giving them hope and warning them through threats. So you'll find many scholars, they write books where they give a bunch of narrations to bring hope and a bunch of narrations to bring fear. As Allah says in the Quran, فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ الْوَعِيدِ And remind with the Qur'an those who fear the torment of Allah, the punishment of Allah. So also we remind with torment that, Akhi, you can, you know, if you don't get right, if you don't fix yourself, it's, it's not going to be good for you. Sheikh bin Baz, he wrote a tremendous book called Wujub al -Tawbah. Wujubat Toba ilallah, the obligation to make Toba to Allah and to return to Him when affairs 
or catastrophic events take place in your life. The Shaykh keyboard in Ayah, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَدَرَّعُوا Should they not, if our punishment and torment comes to them, return back to Allah. So, Shaykh bin Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, if a punishment of Allah comes to you, thumma bayyina subhanahu annahu anna qaswatu al-qulub wa tazyina shayateen lahum a'malahum as-sayyid kullu thalika saddahum an al-tawbah wa al-dara'ah. And he said that if a punishment comes, this is what the slaves should do. They should make tadarra'ah. They should return to Allah. But, Allah explains in another ayah, وَلَكِنْ قَصَّتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ But why didn't they return back? Because their hearts became hard. And shaitan adorned and decorated and made fair-seeming what they were upon from evil. But likewise, it's not always the shaitan from jinn. It is also shaitan from men. Or women that you find when somebody's trying to come up out of their situation they took a fall you'll find the shell team from men mention your shortcomings you'll find the shell team from men and women start gossiping about you because they want you to stay where you're at as one of the salaf said Ibn Qudama brought this in his Muqtasar Minhaj al-Qasidin he said that the salaf used to say I can be patient with a wound on my body I can have a wound that's hurting me, put some bandages on it, and be patient until I heal. But I can't be patient with the tongues of people. I can't be patient with the tongues of people. And human beings know the magnitude of slander, and that's why they do it. So, this is one of the reasons we must know who Allah is and who human beings are. Allah forgives, as we know the hadith, Allah becomes happy with the tawbah of the slave. And the human beings become sad when you make tawbah. Why? Because a lot of the people that are jealous of you, they know your potential even if you don't know it. It's like wearing a white thobe. You just got your hair cut. Sister, you got a nice abaya on. You're looking clean. You might feel clean, but you don't know how you look. Somebody from a distance can look at you and say, she's looking more confident. He's looking more confident. He's looking motivated like before in the 90s. He getting his iman back. So they throw an arrow at you. And that's why we must have strong personality. We must have confidence in Allah. We must have yaqeen. And this is why one of the greatest du'as you can make is Allahumma inni as'aluka ma'afat wa yaqeen. O oh Allah, I ask you for well-being and certainty. A, a Muslim without certainty can be attacked when he's flying and wound him. But a Muslim with certainty, he has thicker skin. So when he's shot at, it's a repellent. Remember back in the 90s, everybody used to walk around with this book called Fortress of the Muslim, Citadel of the Muslim, Husn al-Muslim. What is a husn or what is the husn of a Muslim? It is the dua. So we must understand the meaning of the fortress of the Muslim. It is the du'as that you make that put a gate around you, that fortify you from an attack. That's what the, the book means. Husnun Muslim. So the more that you know du'a, the more that you know the names of Allah, the more that you know the promise of Allah, the more when people attack you, you have a repellent. Why do we put the plastic on the windows when the winter comes? To repel the air from coming in. You think Allah would allow us to have the wisdom to put a, a, a plastic on the window and not put something to cover your heart? What is in your heart why you should always protect it? Iman is here. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, At taqwa hahuna. He said, taqwa is here. Iman is here. Siddiq, truthfulness is here. You make toba from the heart. You make inaba, returning to Allah from the heart. Ikhlas is in the heart. So what would be your ikhlas? What would be your amana, your trust? What would be your iman? What would be your deen? 
if you let somebody affect your heart. And that's why the Muslim always fights to protect himself, to protect his name. And sometimes fighting to protect your name is fixing what you messed up to get your name back. The man that killed 99 people, if he didn't have hope that Allah would fix him, he would have never tried to make Tawbah. Look at the Menzila, the station of Tawbah and hope in Islam. If he would have lied down after the monk told him there's no Tawbah for you, what would have been his fate? Sheikh Ramzan, Ramzan, which is the title of this lecture, Don't Be a Prisoner to Hopelessness. And I translated the whole lecture, and this will be up tomorrow on the uh, Facebook and on the YouTube, the whole uh, translation of the Sheikh, in which I actually based this small talk on. He said, don't look at what unfolds from the, re from the results of calamities and misfortune in your life. This will make you a prisoner to these matters and you will become a prisoner of hopelessness. In closing, Ibn al-Qayyim Jawziya in this tremendous book, Madara Jasali King, he done a research on Tawbah. And if a man after making Tawbah, can he get back to where he used to be or can he advance? So he said that some of the people said that when a person falls, and he said Tawbah is the equivalent or like falling into a bear, like falling into a well. You fall into a well and it's deep. It's a deep well that has depth. You hurt yourself when you fall into a well. So when you come back up, some people say that you're hurt. You can't move as quick as you used to. Ibn Qayyim Jawziya rahimahullah, he said that some say that when you come out of the well, you're more cautious of the, the holes in the ground. Like if you ever notice when you drive down a road and that street has potholes and you, 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 the first day you're tired, you know, you fell in it and you, you know, subhanAllah, you realize that that could have damaged your car. Now the next day you either take another street or you're cautious of the potholes the next day because you know where you fell or where your, your, car, your car fell into the hole the day before. He said this is the, 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 the strongest position. That an individual when he makes toba, he's more cautious. He walks faster and he practices more taqwa with his life. And this is very important to know that you can get back. You can rebound. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I forgot to make this point, and Alhamdulillah Allah brought it back to me, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith that the people of Rome had very good qualities. And one of those qualities that the people of Rome had is that when they take a fall, they get up immediately. They wake up quickly. So the scholars, they say, Sheikh Saleh Ali Sheikh, he explained this hadith. He said, the Muslims, Ola, the Muslims are first to embody and characterize themselves with these qualities of getting back up when they take a fall. Repent to Allah with clear repentance. So Abu Maram, Abu Ali, but his brothers, sisters, they, they coming at me on Facebook. My ex-wife saying this over here. I have been given dawah over 22 years. Before I went overseas, I, I got involved in dawah. I was working at a bookstore that I was managing for a Pakistani brother. And everybody that was around in the 90s, they know me from working at that bookstore in 1998 to 99. And I left 99 been around 21, 22 years. I haven't seen anyone that slandered somebody that don't have 10 more sins than you have. Now we're never gonna be in balance. If somebody's saying something about you that you've done, then you have to be humble enough to apologize and fix it. But that person does not have the right to put you in prison for life. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a tawab, is a gafur rahim, is ra'uf, is al jabbar. And jabbar means to fix that which is broken. So you've been broken, you, went, you, you, you took a fall, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love to mend you. And that's why we have a du dua, Allahumma majburni. Oh Allah, fix me, bring me back. I've been broken. So you don't let any human being 
any human being have that type of power over your life. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq and sadad and siddiq and truthfulness and to give us honesty on our quest to him and the next life and to take our religion more serious and to not let entitlement and feeling like we've arrived because we've been around the dial where we've been Muslim for so long so we feel like we don't have to advance that is the that is the the recipe for destruction this deen is a blessing and it never will be shown in your life without gratitude for it Hada wa nusalli'a al-nabiyyina Muhammad